Once again, welcome to WordCamp Jacksonville. I'm Gene, and I will be talking about WordPress automation. Basically, it's a talk on uh, WordPress workflow. This is supposed to be a 30 minute talk. I gave this talk at WordCamp Miami as a lightning talk. I gave this talk uh, at another WordCamp in a meetup. It just never gets, gets to 30 minutes. So you'll have plenty of time to ask me questions at the end, and um, we can take it from there. Why should you automate your uh, WordPress, your job you do with WordPress, whatever you're doing with WordPress? This talk is supposed to be more developer, so I will lean towards that in this version of it. But truth be told, I have some things that will integrate with a user. If you're using WordPress, main reason you're using it is because you have user interactions. And um, for you not to think about when you're automating WordPress, it, you have to think about the user's aspects of things as well. So I work at a university and I deal with a lot of uh, faculty and staff and admins that are not tech savvy at all and they prefer to use their spreadsheets for things. And even though I might give them a form, like, hey, just fill out this form, and you can just hit submit, and then it does everything for you, they're like, no, just pull it from my spreadsheet. So I'll go over all that, how I use that, and how that workflow goes, and automate process. So that's not really developer talk, per se, but there's aspects of that to it. Uh, why you should use it, it makes life a lot easier, in general. Uh, <laughs> Show of hands, how many of you guys are lazy developers? <laughs> I might be the laziest of them all. <laughs> I have assistants. Uh, I'm a senior developer, so I have uh, junior developers and assistants below them as well. And truth be told, this talk was put together by them. So, <laughs> 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 so <laughs> mainly because like, I nag on them about, hey, we need to do this faster, and we need to find a better system. So they kind of took my nagging them up this to put up uh, some documentation of how we automate system. I took that and made PowerPoint slides out of it. So one of our, our documentation is I'm lazy, and it's true, I'm lazy. I prefer to do a lot of other things than have to worry about a lot of the processes of building a web, a web application, a website, or a theme or plugin or anything in that relation. So, uh, one of the other things is there's, well, well I kind of explained this, I don't want to do most of the stuff that goes on. Um, there's a lot when you're building a, a website, in per se. So when you're building a website, um, you have to think about themes and plugins. Themes, you're th thinking about CSS processors, um, minifying JavaScript, a lot of that stuff I don't want to think about. I don't care how they really work or why they improve my web. Well, I do, performance, but I don't want to think about this stuff. So I make sure the automations are working perfectly fine, so I don't have to worry about this. Uh, keeping things consistent. I had a bad going at this when I started um, my web development career. I will build one thing and then turn around, have a new client and build something else and it'll be completely different and I have to use separate tools because I didn't keep things in a consistent uh, way. Um, I remember I use, uh, say for instance, I use starter themes, there's underscore S, there's a, a few of them out there. I had two or three clients using different starter themes, and one was based on foundation, one was based on bootstrap, one was based on some other CSS I don't remember the name of, and I was just, it just threw me, it just made me crazy, pretty much. <laughs> so, one of the key things is keeping things consistent, so that way when you enter a project, regardless of what the project is, you have a framework in, at hand. Uh, before I really move on, this is based on my, mostly on my experiences as well. So I'm hoping that you guys just don't really want to copy and paste anything I'm kind of talking about. It's more of a process that you have to go through yourself and see, to find out what best fits you. I just want to make sure I, I, I say that. Uh, time is money. Regardless if you're a contractor, you get paid by the hour or your salary or you have a fixed uh, rate, 
uh, time is money. You're, you save your clients money when you're able to do a job a lot faster. You're able to save your time <laughs> and be able to get paid at a higher rate because you're able to do the job a lot faster. So with automation, speed is one of the, the key things and because of speed, you are able to make more money. And time for other things. Um, I generally have a family. I have, I love playing video games. Like, I really love playing video <laughs> games. So I tend to, you know, want to spend time playing that instead of hanging out with my family. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, um, you know, outside of that, I still have to spend time with a wife who wants to uh, hang out and binge watch a few shows and whatever. I have kids, I have to take recitals and, and things like that. So because of that, I have to uh, make sure I have time for them because as you all know, we, we can spend 60 hours in less than a week and it will go by and you don't see anybody or stay in your home office or cave and that's not a good life to live. When, pretty much at this point, it's time to stop, stop cowboy coding. I'm saying this and have the preferences because I still do. But I kind of do it in a different way. I'll explain that in a little later. But um, when you are creating a, a theme, you pretty much want to make sure um, you start your automation process as soon as possible. And it doesn't have to be actual code you put together or anything. It's using like a starter theme. Like underscore S saves you 10,000 hours. If you want to create your theme from scratch, you know, you wasted, you're spending 10,000 hours to pretty much get to what underscore S is. And if you ever seen underscore S before, it's pretty much nothing. So it's a very basic theme um, from automatic and it's, a, to me, it's one of the best starter themes because it has no real true formatting and you can pretty much do anything you want and pull and rip out anything else. Um, also, I would always recommend is either using a star theme or pulling from underscore theme and converting it to your own little star theme yourself, which makes it a lot easier when you're working on projects. Uh, same thing goes for plugins. Uh, there's tons of plugins, uh, scaffolds out there. Uh, I would say pick one or two or play around with a few of them and just take a look. And it'll help you create those plugins a lot faster. There's tons of people who've done this before and are already in the process of automating. Why not use what they have to make it a lot easier for you? Like I said, time is money, so they did the time for you. Go ahead and make the money off of them. <laughs> WordPress installs. Um, generally, any project you're working on, you're going to install WordPress, unless it already exists. But even though they already exist, you're, you're installing one locally. Hopefully, you are doing local development. <coughs> or you're doing a remote dev development somewhere. And WordPress installs, even though it says five minutes, you can do it a lot faster than that. So that's one of the key things, and not just a lot faster than that, but have it installed with all the plugins and tools already there for you. That's the biggest thing, because yes, you can do the five minutes, but then you have Hello Dolly in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna use Hello Dolly for anything, <laughs> so, you know. Have it installed the way you need it with all the plugins and themes already there for you. Where? I'm sorry if I'm going a little too fast. I'm trying to slow it down, but the coffee's kicking in fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, local development. So this is the biggest key. I do, actually not on this machine anymore, I do a lot of <laughs> local development on uh, my other machines, my Mac and both of my Macs I work at at home, and pretty much I create themes, WordPress sites, full-on applications locally on my machine. So I run through all my automation tasks on my machine, so that way I'm not worried about any errors or people seeing like, oh, what are you doing, and freaking out, things like that. It's a good place to start your automations and get it go run through, because um, it's less errors and less risk of getting um, security holes pretty much. So when you're doing some of these automations, they tend to have uh, databases already set up with password, password,
type of deal and you don't want that being out there. So you want to do a lot of stuff locally on your machine and eventually you'll change those passwords. And when you push them up to your remote de uh, development, which is pretty much like dev.mywebsite.com and on there, or your sandbox development on there, you know, you'll set up the database a little, a little better. But then again, um, this has a little less automation as your local, local environment will because you're pretty much doing pushes from your local environment to your dev. And by the time you get to your the production site, the live site, the only automation is really from your Git that you're pushing from your development <laughs> to your production, but the automation process might be a little different, um, mainly when it comes to maybe someone posts a content and social media, something gets posted on social media automatically. Or it's more minor automations than everything you did since the beginning. So hopefully I've wasted a good 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> And because the rest of the time is what you're really looking for. It's the how. Um, truth be told, this is a big deal now, Docker and, and Vagrant. Well, if you ask me in December, I would say Vagrant first because I've been using Vagrant for a long time. Vagrant is a tool that lets me create local, not just local, but uh, an environment setting in whatever server or local environment I'm working with. So if I wanted to, if my client has a server that's running PHP Nginx, and at the time, especially when I was using Vagrant, everyone's on a LAMP stack. Hopefully you guys know what a LAMP stack is. But everyone's, we're moving over to more of a, a, a LAMP stack, Nginx stack type of stack, or something different. So these will help you create these environments and kind of have that mock-up of the environment. Makes things a lot easier to do that. And they let you create that automation process with them because they have the customization ability. I'll actually go over a demo and you'll actually see date, um, I'm sorry, you'll see Docker in process. And that's actually kind of nice because I switch over to Docker. Makes things a lot easier. Git, hopefully you, all you guys know what Git is. Um, most of your machines, if you haven't installed, has a basic Git. Um, if you use GitHub, that's one thing. Uh, just pretty much out, out in the cloud. The places I work at, a lot of them use GitLab. I'm not sure if any of you guys heard of that. GitLab is uh, quite nice. I enjoy it personally more and more as I use it. It just helps with more of the automation process as well. I'll, you'll see that in, in process in a little, in a little bit. WP CLI. Um, this has been the biggest lifesaver for me in my automation. Uh, the things the, they improve on and they keep doing with this is, is pretty nice. This will save you a lot of times when it comes to installing and uh, Putting, like, say, for instance, uh, the whole uh, plugin scaffolding they have it in there. I actually learned if it was in the Gutenberg talk that there's a Gutenberg uh, block <laughs> scaffolding in there. So you can actually call it through your command line and set it up through there, which saves you a lot more time when it comes down to it. So WCLI have the, the aliases. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about this because. I use it, but there's still some more of it that I'm, I want to learn more about it, and I just use it for the function I need to use it for, but this is a, a tool saver, and it's worth looking into. Uh, there's tons of task runners out there, and uh, most of them are, they do the dirty work. That's what I pretty much call them. So the CSS, process, the CSS processors, they deal with them, the minifying and everything else that you don't want to deal with them, I'll use either Gump or Grunt, uh, Webpacks, they're um, available, you can set those up as well. These are tools that's been used for a few years now and it's up to you to choose whatever tool you set you prefer. They all pretty much do the same, they have, people have different reasons, I know people who use like multiple tools all together, not sure why they do it, but they, they figure it out. Um, I know some people, actually, I think Legacy Code. That's 
one other reason why you uh, they stick to one or keep doing one job. All right, so I'm gonna go over this demo with you real quick. Uh, yes, it takes a little longer than five minutes on this de demo, mainly because of uh, I ran across some issues. <laughs> But generally, it takes me a little less than five minutes because I can't play a video game or, you know, get on Twitter long enough to have any fun with this. Uh, basically, what I did in the beginning, I called a Git, uh, I cloned a GitHub repository. This is actually not my GitHub repository, but I went ahead and um, when I cloned it, I put it in a directory. I see it in the directory at this point now. Um, I did this demo pretty much last night. That's probably why I was up a lot longer than I needed to. In Docker, the only file you need to care for is that Docker Compose file. Um, the other stuff are there based on that Docker Compose file or the, the GitHub repository. Um, at this point, I'm doing a Docker pull, which is uh, Docker Compose pull, which is pulling uh, a WordPress repository or well, the latest WordPress repository and a few other things to uh, create that uh, MySQL da database, which is uh, MariaDB, and uh, set up Nginx for me and the whole PHP uh, setup for me. So at this time, you notice it's actually doing all, it's actually doing all the download now. Generally, when I'm waiting for this, I am gonna drink some coffee and we can sit back and wait. It doesn't take that long, but it, like I said, I did this last night, and it shouldn't be so bad. But um, most of the items going on in here doesn't take too much space in your local environment. That's the reason I like Docker. The resources it takes is very minimal compared to when I was using Vagrant. Um, with Docker, I can have two or three of these downloading based on the machine I'm using. I have, I have one super awesome Mac, iMac at, at work that I run three or four of these at one one time. So and it works smoothly, no issues. It doesn't crash or anything. If I try to do more than one of these on this computer, it will more likely crash, but this computer is a lot older and the resources are not as uh, available. But at this point, it downloaded everything, it set up the image for me and uh, MariaDB is ready to go. And the very next thing, if we can go, is I have a WordPress site. Now, truth be told, that video was like seven minutes long, give or take, the whole setup took maybe a little less than five minutes to get done. Um, at this point, you have a WordPress, full functional WordPress site, you can do whatever you, you want. The way we do it, at least for the university I work at, um, we have download WordPress as a key, and it does a GitHub pull for us, it does the, the Vagrant, the Docker compose for us and everything, and within eight minutes, it pulls up the site with all the plugins and themes and everything we have in there. And pretty much has a login. So I have a base login that I use for all my starting development sites. I log in in there and I'm up and going. I don't even have to go through the whole setup process. So it's actually kind of nice. But then again, it will set up for that. We use batch scripts and things like that. So that's a little further, but that's, you know, eight minutes that I don't have to, well, it's eight minutes that I don't have to do anything even though it probably took us about an hour and a half to really set up. But after that, we roll out tons of sites on a week. Maybe we run like eight, nine sites a week. So this is doing this doesn't take much time for us to do. Uh, more resources. Automatic updates, WP config uh, is a great file to set that up. I will recommend at least doing the minor ones. And um, if you're feeling brave, you can do the major ones too. <laughs> I generally, for my clients in the universe I work at, I never do the major ones. Um, I'm still afraid of Gutenberg and don't know what's gonna do my content yet. So I have uh, the test plugin in, in my development. 
so everything seems fine until it rolls out and then you notice things are gone. So I'm not going to get yelled at by the wrong people. Uh, Jetpack has a few features with uh, social media and images and uh, it helps with a few of the automations. We do run a plugin that helps uh, actually run our own little script that helps minify our images so it keeps them nice, nice and light on the web pages. But uh, Jetpack has an extra little feature in there that helps uh, store it in the cloud and deliver it a lot faster. We do use it and it's worth, worthwhile. Um, another thing you can always Google it, keyword workflow automation. You know, um, WordPress workflow, that's pretty, pretty much you can Google and find a list of uh, places and people, how they do it. This is not, this is the way I kind of do things, but Googling it is probably the best way of finding any answers you're looking for. Uh, also, there's these uh, task managers. I do use the, Zapier is a good one, but I don't use it as much, but I do use this if, if, whatever. I use it mainly because earlier I was telling you most of the faculty, the university I work at, they are set in their ways. That's the nice way of saying that, I believe. And um, they have spreadsheets and they don't deter from them. I, I've actually convinced them to use Google Docs, the spreadsheets, Google Sheets. So they moved to that just fine. <coughs> Took them a while, but they did. And at this point, I have a, a setup so that way it checks the spreadsheet, the Google spreadsheet, every like three or four times a day. I think it's three times a day. It takes it in the morning, midday, and at night. And it will create posts. And it'll not just create, we have a lot of custom post types, so it'll create a certain custom post type based on what that's on the spreadsheet. And if they remove something on the spreadsheet, it will set that to pending. So instead of just deleting it outright, because people make mistakes. I learned this after the first couple people started deleting. <laughs> And it deleted off. It's like, hey, don't take it off the website. But you delete off the spreadsheet. So it'll it'll revert it back, back and forth, based on the, the spreadsheet. So that's one good way of doing things, uh, especially when um, the job requires it. Because I pretty much build websites, but I'm not the person really using it. Um, there's also a few a few other uh, features that. Both of these sites do. I have the URLs in here, and I think you guys will have the link to this to PowerPoint. I gave it to the people in charge. So um, I also have a list of lazy links here, so that way if you don't want to Google it, you can actually click on the links. Uh, these are just basically articles of the workflows. You can easily take a look at them and see how things go, and you should be just fine going through uh, setting up your own way of uh, getting things done. Um, these links are I think the most important ones of, of them all. The Docker one, I wanted to show you this in the demo because this one was a lot nicer but last night I had problems with it. I wasn't sure because of the hotel Wi-Fi or yeah, I'm going to blame it on the hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I had problems with it. It wouldn't let me do it and um, I should have gave up on it earlier so I can um, went, to bed, went to bed earlier, but I went back to the old one. But this one is a lot better. It lets you do some of the setup in the command line. So you can tell the site name and give it the, the login and the password all through it. It's by uh, 10, 10 up. They also have a Vagrant version. If you're still using Vagrant, you probably should move, move away from that by now. But you still, regardless, they, they're both awesome. And uh, 10 up is a great company. They work uh, in WordPress and do a lot of things. Uh, Docker is the tool I'll using. Um, of course, look up WPCLI. Uh, I'm Gene Felicime. You can find me on Twitter. Basically, that's the only one I probably keep track of. Um, my website's there. I, it's, n it's nothing there. It's, <laughs> it's there to take up space. Um, that's it, guys. Hopefully, <laughs> you enjoy my candid talk. Um, have any questions? I'm willing to answer anything. If not, we can call it a day and I can take a nap. <laughs> Since you've done this session before, how many people uh, are developers you find use a doctor? I use it. I'm just curious. 
I don't know if anyone else for de for development. Um, more and more now. So I moved over to Docker February. So I was really behind, but there was like plenty of, of developers. Oh, yeah, there's a lot on the web. I just was curious, like generally, who's in here of developers. Any of you developers use Docker? I, I used to use <laughs> server server press. If if you guys I use, use server press, press too, I yes, use Docker. Um, if you don't use Docker, take a look at it. It's not complicated. Hold on, any, anybody of you guys use command line? Command line. All right. Get on command line before get on Docker. Because to be told, when I learned command line, um, it makes things a lot easier and a lot faster. And it makes it easier to get into the Docker and get into some of these more advanced tools, like the WP CLI. Pretty much you can do everything you can do with WordPress through the command line. That's the majority of the tools. The way I have it set it up is uh, I use WP Engine. And I create a transparent install, so I have already a, an, an install created with all the, the things I want and I need. Mm -hmm. So I just copy the install. Just copy it. So it's basically the same procedure, but the only added value that I see over there is that it's actually online. Right. I had bad experiences with local development or like mm -hmm. that's in the moment that it doesn't need to okay. fail, it fails. You and I'd rather blame works somebody for else for right. it. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's the way I see it. If it works for you. Yeah. Make it work. I, that's why I, I believe in automation. Like, you know, you don't have to do it do it that way, but if you find a workflow that works, why not? You know. The one nice thing about Docker, I mean, if you're doing plugin or whatever, or troubleshooting, with, it's like I can stand up a, a you know a site running seven one PHP or five or six or it, it doesn't matter. I can simply tweak that file and just stand it up and yeah. troubleshoot there. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're doing that, or if you just have a live site and a staging site, then that's probably sufficient. And yeah, that's the biggest thing because I will notice um, the you know, I work for FIU, uh, University of uh, Florida International University. Uh, we run multiple instances of uh, PHP, so we have like a 5.6, mm -hmm. we have a 7, and then a 7.2, and all these others. And the 5.6 will run run fine, but then. When we have to recreate that site, we do like seven two, like things are broke, bro broken. So it's one of those things that, like, okay, we can troubleshoot. We know why it's broken. We have to rewrite some PHP code, something mm -hmm. like that. But if you're using WP Engine and you're keeping your our clients on WP Engine, anyways, you know that's yeah. the the thing. Yeah. So it makes it easier. But uh, I still will recommend learning command line. No, yeah, it's. Well worth it. It was it was something I kind of fought over too, but I, when I got the grasp of it, it went by. It's a, little, it's a lot easier than people make it seem. Most people are like, oh, that's yeah. not easy. Uh, any more questions? Making it easy on you guys. <laughs> What's your opinion of managing multiple WordPress websites with a plugin like you know WordPress Multi or any of those? Do you Find that cumbersome. It's to save you time. Would you worry about security? Um, like, uh, give me give me an example. Like, uh, I know there's just the other speaker this morning was talking about he manages multiple WordPress websites with plugins. I guess WordPress Multi or something like that. Oh, okay. There's, there's multi. There's main WP. Yeah. There's manage the WP. There's a lot yeah. of those tools. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I didn't. Set. I don't know. I don't have any use of plugin myself. But as I said, would would you um, feel comfortable? I, I'm a hardcore developer. <laughs> Okay. So I'm not a fan of using WP, like any of those tools. I do know of them, yeah. but not really by name because I just don't get into their environment. But uh, I know people who use it, and um, College of Engineering uses it, uses a, uses a tool like that, and they clone, they do clone to their sites, and it for him it makes it easier for him. That's his workflow. He doesn't do any of this. He just like clones it using that tool. But to me, it's like you're paying a company a lot of money for something you can do, right. and you know it's it's the cost value. Is the cost value worth it to you? Then go with it. If it's not, it wasn't worth it to me. I I learned how to manage websites without it, and things like that. Yeah. yeah on that topic, I use Infinite. Infinite WordPress. Oh, the Infinite WP, WP, right? Yeah. And I manage quite a few sites with that, and it's free. Yeah. 
works really good. I think really if you're good. managing a lot, it seems like it'd be a time saver. That's yeah. that's the key. It's not yeah. If it's not, if it's just a couple. Sites, but if you're yeah, like I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I really make it. Sites <laughs> I manage, right. then I need right. because you can update everything in one shot. You can do backup everything in one shot. You can also pick and choose which ones you can install plugins on all. Mm -hmm. um, there was a plugin recently removed from the WordPress repository, and mm -hmm. you know it's like oh, I got it like on thirty different yeah. websites, yeah. right? You can't so, go on each website. Well, you right. can, but that takes yeah, a while, it takes right? a while, right? And so <laughs> using this, I was able to remove it from all of the websites in one go. Is it secure? You know, turn on your server. From everything I've read, it's, well, if it it's WP, well. Is the one you have to have a server install of it too? I install. You got to install it somewhere. Right. And then you have it can be online, so I, I install it locally. So I install it on my development server, right. and then I can manage everything from there. I feel that's you know yeah. probably more secure. It's also user management. That. You can do user management through it. So if you have all those different sites with all the different clients, and you have this developer that you've used for all these different sites, and then you no longer work with the developer, you go into this one thing, and you can boom, get them out of all the sites at yeah. once. Yeah. Okay. So it's 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 helpful for you. You still got to manually <coughs> check everything when you do all the updates. Absolutely. You got to go in there and make sure everything's still working. Yeah. But so, even that's my way, I still have, we still have to go through each site to make right. sure, like after we do updates or we remove a user, what we have to do. And, um, and I know Falcon, he left, and he was like on thirty sites, so mm -hmm. we had to remove them. It, for us, it's like in command line, we can just remove the user. But uh, throughout the sites, but then we had to go to each site to make sure he was removed. Because sometimes you just don't know. Mm -hmm. So you wrote a script to remove him from every site. Yeah, we have a script that connects with that WPCLI, yeah, and yeah. WPCLI actually removes them. It mm -hmm. goes through each site. Mm -hmm. Our, you use bash for that, like a bash. Yeah, script? bash script. Yeah, okay. yeah, the bash script. Yeah, we use a lot of bash script. It makes things a lot easier for us. But uh, a W. Infinite is actually one that I do kind of remember. I remember you have to install it. I'm not sure how. I think at one point they had an issue, but I think uh, they might have solved it. But once again, it's that that value. And I think it's free. Free is the thing. They do have a premium version, but the premium version just allows like cloning. I think almost everything else is available. Like autom, they'll do the premium. I think does automated backups and cloning and stuff like that. But I prefer to do that myself. What were some of the other ones that y'all mentioned? Uh, Manage WP. Manage WP, WP. Main WP. Main WP. Main WP yeah. I control that's, WP. That's is a good one too for a self or for a software as a service product. Say, say that again. Sorry. I control WP. It's also good if you don't want to. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And it tell you how much those tools are needed. And so the reason know. I do the infinite is because I like it on my computer. Yeah. yeah. Main is also self. -hosted. That's really self -hosted easy to well. do. Oh, main self hosted as well. Yeah, I have it on my server. Um, I preferred that. Instead what of is it? Main, main, the main WP. WP. Yeah. yeah. Is that a paid one? Paid. I pay. I like paying for. Is what there a I free get, version? I, know, I think there mm -hmm. is a free, but I I went ahead and upgraded because right. it was a one time. I don't have to repay for it every year. Ah, oh, okay. It was a one time. See, I one like time. Yeah, see. <laughs> and I'm like, don't, hey, if it's gonna I keep you around, like I'm, I'm always thinking at this point, like the WordPress environment, it's most, most everything's moved to subscription model, so it's mm -hmm. like you're either paying a monthly or yearly type of deal for something. Mm -hmm. But I don't if like it's that. a one time yeah. deal, kind of have to worry about the well, maintenance. I don't trust that for too long. Yeah. <laughs> as long like as they're time. still yeah. 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 If they're still updating in and, and it might not like, be a one time thing anymore. That's I've been on it for over for, a year yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah, they more likely switched That's over. the problem yeah. with that model is if it switches to Yeah. You know, yearly. Now hey, you're I'm stuck all about them keep them, them keeping their jobs yeah. and yeah. updating yeah. the plugin. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm all bad, yeah. I'd I like rather pay for a plugin than get one for free sometimes because your mom. I know that it's going to be taken care of. Yeah, it's going to be taken care of. Yeah, yeah it's if, a it's one of, if it's a staple plugin of mine and right. not just a one-off thing, then yeah. Exactly. I, th I think uh, even the university I work at, they want us to use more paid plugins and slow us down from creating so many of them. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, if we let you go, who's going to maintain this plugin? I don't know. you got to figure that out. <laughs> it's all let me go. Right? It's yeah, don't let me go. My documentation can only go so far. <laughs> so, any more questions? I think that is my time. Guys, enjoy the rest of the workout.